Ephesians 1 and 16. And what I've done in times past, and it's, and it's quite amazing. Once again, this is not witchcraft, it's not no spooky pooky stuff. Um, but, but if it is a legitimate thing, and there's a real concern about the person, what I've done is pray for God to give me understanding about the person or about the individual. Um, yes, sir. Uh, Ephesians 1, 16, but ver mainly verses, verses 17. Now watch this, verse 17. And, and I've prayed this on some of y'all. Not to change. Keep in mind, and once again, you're not, you're not going to change people, but you seek to understand people. A lot of times there will be more peace and harmony in any relationship if I have an understanding. And if I can understand something about them that's causing them to be that way. See, see they, may have, they may have had a trouble with bald-headed black men and black jackets. See? And every time I wear this, this, they don't like me. But I think it's me. You, you understand what I'm saying? But, but I didn't know that somebody did something a long time ago that was bald head wore a black jacket. <laughs> you know? So now it ain't me. It's something else going on. So therefore I seek to understand. Because the one that's the most spiritually mature in that particular situation seeks to understand for the sake of relationship. And so I pray this prayer. Ephesians 1 and 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now watch this. Stop and look up for just a second. What I do, where it says him, I put the name of the person. Now let's say that I'm concerned uh, about Khalil. And Khalil been cool all this time. All of a sudden, Khalil is a, is a little distant. And I'm concerned about him. And whatever the issue is, now he cool. But, but whatever the issue is, I want to take the opportunity. I want to make sure that I, 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 I fix it. I do whatever records, whatever I need to do to make us get back tight. So what I do, I say, Lord, I thank you for giving me the spirit of wisdom and revelation regarding Khalil. Amen. And what happened? God was, and as I see Khalil, God will start allowing me to see more behind the scene. And now, now my discernment has kicked in and I'm able to see the why. And now, and now God will give me wisdom on how to close that gap. But for the most part in general, the key to your peace is going to be the, the, just kind of the general rule in life. You can't change, folks. Man, they drive you crazy. Hey, 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 can I tell you something? And if you're trying to change people, whoever you're trying to change, whoever or whatever, whoever, that's an opportunity for the devil to steal your joy. Yes. He, he'll use that person. In fact, guess what? You could be having a great day, made a million dollars in, in, in the last hour, and then that person come to mind, and your, and your smile will go to a frown. Because what you have done, you have given too much power to a person. You have given more power to a person than that, than who it is, than that person uh, requires. You, what, what you're doing, what you're doing is robbing yourself of your personal peace by empowering somebody with that much to make you think, oh, they ain't changing, and now you down. You know, now, I mean, in fact, uh, going over our lesson, and by the way, uh, uh, yes, sir. Where, where you? Uh, if y'all don't mind, um, amen. If y'all don't mind, I'd like for everybody to stand on your feet. Amen. Uh, and, and if y'all don't mind, of course, uh, I want to say hi to everybody in Facebook land. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you so much. And we pray that something will be said and done that's going to bless you and encourage you. We're going to continue, of course, uh, in our lesson plan. But before we do so, there's one bit of administrative duties that we must attend to. Uh, if you would, on this side and that, uh, turn toward Rod and Ken. <laughs> and yes, sir. In fact, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, let's do this. Let, let's turn to a Rod and Ken. And everybody say, Happy, Happy Ninth, Ninth, Ninth Anniversary! anniversary. <laughs> now, also, I need a deacon. To, to bring a bucket up here. And, and if y'all don't mind, before they leave here today, I want everybody to give at least $9. We sure will. At, at least $9, amen, uh, uh, to, to, toward their dinner. Um, now, here they are up at the church. 
Amen. And I appreciate that. But at the same time, if they're going to leave here, they're going to leave here better than they can. I know they're good. <laughs> but we're going to make sure they leave here better than they came. Amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. So, with that being said, yes, sir, I will. I'm going to start it out with 20. But if you don't mind, just put it right there. Amen. 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 <laughs> this is not a normal thing. It's something that we're doing just for this is the Lord. Amen. Amen. So take your seat. Amen. Give God a hand. Pray for them. Amen. 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 Uh, once again, welcome to Remnant Church International. My name is Victor Wynn. I'm the senior pastor. And of course, I want to thank you so much for your time. And won't, won't be before you long, I think, but there are some, uh, some things that we must take care of regarding how to handle hard times. Tonight, we'll be closing out that series on how to handle hard times. Have, have y'all enjoyed that? that that's yeah. helped anybody? Yeah. I, 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 now, of course, a lot of these messages, of course, uh, if, if it don't apply to you today, uh, put it on the shelf. You may need it tomorrow. He's okay. Right. The Dutch just got him. Okay. Amen. Amen. We got both put it. Y'all relax. Amen. See, don't be distracted. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, um, and, and, so, and so, of course, uh, these messages, you can put on the shelf and pull them out for later on, or you can go to our YouTube channel, and you see it, of course, on YouTube. You can go to the Facebook uh, and other, uh, other uh, social media sites that we have these things already, already put together and already available. Of course, um, our, first, our first topic on how to handle hard times, our first, uh, first one was, y'all remember the first one? The first one was, know that God is for you. Remember that? Know that God is with you and for you. And we came from Ezekiel 36 and that. We're not going to review tonight, but I want to make sure that, that that's a key element when you're going through or facing hard times is that you're not alone. Amen. And the sooner you get a realization, revelation of God in you, with you, and, and that God's working for you, the sooner you'll be able to hear God's instructions or glean God's guidance in order for directions to overcome whatever you're facing. Amen. Uh, case in point, there was something that I was looking at uh, regarding a wedding well, house. I'll talk about it later. Number two. The number two was, do I remember number two? You must protect your peace. Amen. Must protect your peace. The most important thing you have in your life. Amen. It, 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 it's, it's, not, it's, it, it's not people. It's not money. It's not job, not even purse. The most important thing you have in your life is your personal peace. Amen. Without peace, you will have without peace, you will not be able to function properly in life. Peace is a necessary element for you to enjoy the things and, and have a peace of mind and for your body and your mind and, and everything to operate optimally. Amen. So so peace is your most important asset. And that's why, of course, as we was talking early on, that you don't want to let anybody steal your peace. And keep in mind now, people as a whole on purpose and not out trying to steal your peace. Amen. People steal our peace when we voluntarily make things and people more important than they should be. Amen. And this is our part. See, we, we got to know, see, we got to know in relationships when to pray and when to do other things. But God will lead you. And this is where the, this is where the necessity of being spirit-led and sensitive to God and being able to discern between soul, your mind, will, and emotions, and your spirit come into play. In other words, this is this is a this is the point in your relationship with God that you got to know when it's God and when it's you. Because you'll know it's God. Because when it's God, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. See, you'll know it's God when the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience, and so on. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so therefore, if I'm not in love, joy, and peace, then obviously, then I'm out of the Spirit of God. So if I'm trying to get angry or other stuff trying to manifest, I'm wrong. See, see, when you start getting irritated and agitated, you're starting to move away from the thing. You're starting to get, yes sir, you're starting to get out of your position of purpose and peace with God. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. You see, you see um, in the case of a Christian, in the case of a Christian, um, because we have Jesus Christ and we accepted him as Lord, the Bible says we already have everything we need. Is that right? Yes. And so therefore, we got to understand that, 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 that we are not uh, broke people 
praying for money. Mm -mm. We are blessed people, amen, that the devil try to make broke. Amen. amen. That makes sense? We are not sick people uh, praying for healing. We are healed people that the devil is trying to get us to co-sign on sickness. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we are not, yes sir, we are not crazy people trying to get calm. No, 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 no. We have the mind of Christ. Yeah. We cool. We, hey, hey, it's just that the devil try to make us act crazy. <laughs> see, see, in other words, what the devil does, he uses, he manipulates external circumstances mm -hmm. to get you out of position. Yeah. And to get us to where we act out of, when we out of position, we out of character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. See, 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 if the devil can get me to forget that, that I'm the righteousness of God, that got me on this again. Now I'm the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. I, I start reacting emotionally to stuff that I shouldn't let get to. Right. Yeah. Right. So that I, so I don't get on that again. But anyway, so 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 therefore, I gotta understand that what the devil is trying to do is the very thing that Jesus said. Don't turn to it, but in, in your Bible it says John 10:10, 10, 10, Satan comes to steal, steal. steal. kill, and, and destroy. How does he do that? He gets in our, he, 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 he gets, gets us to thinking. Mind. Or, or meditating off of who we are. Right. Mm -hmm. This is why your this is why you knowing your identity is so important. Because Satan is banking on tricking you out of who you are. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he's banking on a, a, a Satan. It, it's like that silly rabbit. <laughs> that, that what he gonna do? He gonna tuck in his ears under a cap. He gonna cover up his fuzzy tail. He gonna put on he gonna put on a suit. He's going to come to the door and he's going to knock on your door begging, begging for some syrup. Because <laughs> he's trying to hide who he is. Because he, he knows if he came, if he came all and, 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 and what little uh, uh, demeanor he has, he knows that you would know it's him. So therefore, but, but, but watch this, but, but watch this. But therefore, because we are Christians, because we are born again, amen, because we are mature, because we have moved from milk to bread to meat, we are sensitive and we are discerning and when the devil comes acting crazy through whatever form or whatever person, we tell him, oh devil, use a lie. Tricks are for kids. Amen. All right, yeah, use that. I think, I, think, I think General Mills uses that. Amen. So open your Bibles to my last point and I'm going to let this be the last one. I don't have one. Amen. But also, it may be pretty much the most very important Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Go with me to Philippians yes, chapter four. Tricks off forget the devil's trying to trick you out of your treats. Mm -hmm. He wants you to believe the circumstances more than you believe the word. See? And so therefore, so therefore, I'm gonna continue on that line. So therefore, mm-hmm. Here's our, here's our, here's our, our last point. This, this is not all the points, but this is the last one we're going to do because i got to go on something different on next week. This is new. Philippians chapter 4. I'm just going to read verse number 6. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. you got to say amen. 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 Paul says, Be careful for nothing, but in, but in everything... By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Number seven says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, final point in this particular series of how to handle hard times is found in verse number six. And verse number six begins with these four words. We must learn to be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. We must get to the point that we learn how not to care. Yeah. And that sounds like a, like a contradiction, but care, watch this, care in the sense of worry and fear and burdens. You see, God did not design man to carry cares. This is why people, this is why 
disease and sickness and a lot of things come on people because they're carrying more than they should. Yes, sir. We're carrying more than we should. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, 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 and so, therefore, so therefore, the devil knows that if he can get us caught up in the cares of the world, yes, sir, then he knows that he can then take advantage of us out of position. Because when I start caring for the world, I get out of position. Okay. Y'all gonna make me go to that. Go to Mark chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what Jesus said. How about that? That good? How about that? Let me show you what Jesus said. Mark chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go with verses number, now, we're going to deal with this eventually, but Mark chapter 4, I think I preached it before, but I'm going to start here. Yes, sir. I'm going to start with verse 14. I'm going to read a little bit. Is that all right? It says, now, now George and Red, okay, this is what Jesus said. He said, the sower soweth the word, right? And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. Let me skip on that. And watch this, watch this, watch this. Mm, I think I'm going back to verse 17. Go to 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. But afterward, when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, they are immediately offended. We'll talk about that later. Watch verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Now watch this. Hear the word. Now watch this. And the cares of this world... And the deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things gathering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Notice this. What makes the word of God unfruitful? Unfaithfulness. When you get caught up in the cares of the world. See Jesus, see, Jesus said, when you get to where you don't trust him, and you're not living by faith and confidence in Him, then you 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 automatically because you're gonna try to do it now. Mm. And, 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 and yes, sir. And because you're gonna try to do it now, then that means that takes takes Him out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I, I, I didn't want to review. Y'all gonna make me review. All right. Go to Second Timothy. I was trying to move on. Second Timothy, mm. chapter two. Yes, sir. And, and let's go on to TPT. Yes, sir. TPT version. This is the best name about it yet? Amen. Yeah. See, see, you got to understand now. See, if the cares of the world choke the word. Now, now did Jesus say that? No. Nope. I mean, Jesus said that the cares of the world, it chokes the word. In other words, whatever word you heard is being choked. And there have been choked out? Mm. Raise your hand. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, see, I saw Rob raise his hand, but she didn't raise hers. <laughs> okay, she didn't have choked. He been out. Second <laughs> <laughs> Timothy chapter 2. Watch this. Second Timothy chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And verse number, verse number 3. Yes, sir. We can read it. Yeah, we read the King James first, and then we go to TPT. We can play with it. back and forth this time. Watch this. Second Timothy, you got it. Amen. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse three. Overcome every form of evil, as a victorious soldier of Jesus, the Anointed One. For every soldier called to active duty, watch this, must divorce himself from the distractions of this world. That he may fully satisfy the one who sent him. Mm, that makes sense? Show it in King James Version. King James says, for it, it's a King James Version. Amen. Three and four. The version is a real version. In King James. That's not the faithful one, it's the real one. Because see, when you get caught up in the cares, it says, that therefore endure hardness, look, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse number four. No man that war entangled himself in the okay. oh. Oh. that he may who have chosen him to be a so it displeases God when I'm caught up in cage. 
the, the, the more proper name for the cares of the world is worry. And worry is the cousin of fear. And fear is what the devil uses to bring forth his plots. Fear is what the devil uses to get us off track in the things of God. If the devil can get us fearful, he knows he don't have to worry about us being faithful. But God wants us, now hear me now, God wants us to learn to be fearless. Does that mean less fear? God wants us to be fearless, and watch this, and faithful. What does that mean? Full of faith. Amen. Now you can't be both. You're either full of faith or you're full of fear. You ever seen somebody scary and nervous? It's a sad thing, ain't it? And you be looking like, man, what's going on with them? But have you ever seen somebody full of faith? How they look? They pretty relaxed, ain't they? Almost cool, sometimes sleepy. Why is that? Because they're full of faith. They are faith, full of faith. And, and, and they learn to fear less. Do this good to me. All right, all right, all right. Go to Philippians uh, chapter 4. It's uh, in verse number 11. It's, it's staying TPT for a while. Philippians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Is blessing anybody yet? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Philippians chapter 4. See, see, the devil wants you to get caught up in the cares of the... He wants you to get strung out, tired, woe out, woe down. See, keep in mind, see, see, he wants you to be, be unhappy, can't sleep. You know, I mean, he, 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 he wants you to be woke out. See? But, but Jesus said, uh, yes, sir, don't, don't turn to it, but Jesus said, come unto me, are you that weary and heavy laden? Yes, sir, I do that too. Yes, sir, I just heard that. I will. All right. I'll, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. rest. Yes, sir, I love this. Uh, Philippians 4. Yes, sir, I got one more. Philippians 4. Y'all got time tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Philippians 4, verse number 11. In fact, uh, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm gonna, we, just, we just do 12 and 13 in the TPT. Yes, sir. You ready? Well, no, I got to do 11. 11 got some, got some meat on that. This is what Paul I'm talking about. Uh, this Paul was talking about him dealing with. And by the way, when Paul wrote the book of Philippians, it was while he was in jail. But Paul wrote this particular letter to the people on the Isle of Philippi while he was in prison. See, uh, 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 while they praying for him and, and, and wanting to make sure he all right, uh, you know, he, he's sitting down in jail with the Holy Spirit, uh, penning letters and trying to encourage. In fact, if you, if you read all of chapter 4, uh, he opens up with rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. See, Paul had a revelation and understanding uh, of, of not being caught up in the cares of the world. And this is why God was able to use him in the manner that he did. Now watch this. In fact, uh, in fact, here in verse 11, he says, I'm not telling you this because I'm in need for what I have learned, for I have learned to be satisfied in any circumstance. I like this, verse 12. He says, I know what it means to lack, and I know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. Watch this. For I'm trained hmm, in the secret of overcoming all things, whether in fullness or hunger, and I, whether in fullness or in hunger. And I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. I, I, I love this. It says in verse 11, he says, I'm not telling you this, because I'm trying to get you to give me something. <laughs> he said, I'm not telling you because I'm in need. He said, because I've learned to be satisfied in any circumstance. And ladies and gentlemen, one thing I've learned is this. If you're not, sa see, if you're not satisfied in a look, then you won't never be satisfied with a lot. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, God uses, yes sir, God uses trials. He don't send them, but he uses it for training I like to say training and development. Because God is trying to get to where he has a soldier that's not distracted. Because when you can get distracted, you can get off track. Distraction in and of itself means to get off track. Uh, Daniel 7, 25. Now, I'm going to get back my lesson in a minute. Y'all got me on the side track. I told y'all to ask a question. Daniel chapter 7. Mm-hmm. 
see, oh see, God. see, the the mature Christian, yes, sir, is not is not caught up. Now you're gonna deal with stuff. Please don't, don't misunderstand me. You know you can be mature. I, I mean, I, hey, if I told you everything I did within the last uh, two and a half years, three years, you know, in fact, uh, today marks the day. In fact, yeah, tomorrow is my mom's birthday. And, and by the way, my mom passed away um, on just uh, uh, two years ago on the 18th. But then also, I, I, can, I can tell you, now, I'm, no, 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 put your violins down. I'm not looking for sympathy and pity, but, but what I'm trying to tell you is that what I'm talking about is it, 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 not something that I'm just pulling out the air. I'm trying to show you how to have peace and joy in the midst of trouble, how, how to make it, hey, how to, how to make it through a storm and a storm don't get in you. Daniel chapter 7, and verse 25. Yeah, I might let you get it up there. Uh, no, I'd like to get this up. And you're 7.25. You got to say amen. Amen. Now watch this. Here's what's going on right now. It says, now, this is talking about the devil in this season. It says, and he shall speak great words against the most high, against Christians. He'll try to discredit God. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he tried to make the saints cynical. He, he, he wants you to believe the word. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a head job, man. He's working on you. He's he trying he, he try to get you out track. Boy, he's trying to trick you. The tricks are for him. All right, now watch this. He said, he shall speak great words against the most high. Look at this. He shall wear out the saints of the most high. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. The devil shall what? The devil's trying to do what? What the devil trying to do with you? Are you a saint? What the devil trying to do? See, see, the devil know if you wore out, then you ain't no good for nobody. You know that's the old saying we have in sports. You, you know, you know that that no matter how good a shape you're in and how much you've trained and done everything, you know. Um, but 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 when you get when you get tired, uh, yes, sir. What, 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 what's the saying? It, it says fatigue makes cowards of all men. I don't, I don't care how strong you are, but if you get tired, I, I see some bad dudes in round one. Uh -huh. and, I, I, and I see them get down in round two. Uh -huh. In fact, I know of one. Just wait now. Did good. And everybody knew. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. That's all right. If you can hang in there, and the devil knows it. If you can hang in there by the eighth round, you'll get him because he's going to run out of steam. He's going to run out of steam. He's going to quit. He, in fact, he's going to get to where he started beating himself. You, you know why? Because now the defense is low. See, 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 and this is where, ladies and gentlemen, this is where disease comes in. This is where viruses comes in. This is where this is where sickness and infirmity comes in. When, when, when we when we get our spiritual defense down, our, our physical, our mental defense down by doing too much, mm -hmm. and we do too much because we care too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you can right now that God told you to put down a long time ago, Amen. And, and you know it ain't God because it makes you mad. You fuss every time they call. <laughs> But right now we're talking about how to get rid of that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Can I get back on track now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. They're going back to Philippians. <laughs> All right. All See, y'all started. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. All right. Watch this. So point number three is to be anxious for nothing. So my job, in fact, I, I, and this is so on point because it's what I talked about. Uh, in the new member orientation, that part of my assignment as a pastor is to teach you not to fear. You know, part of my assignment is to get you now, now to teach you that I had to go through some things without fear. Now, I, I, I didn't pass every test, but I, I'm here. Yeah. Amen. 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 But, but, but I'm trying to tell you something that's going to make sure you have peace. Because, see, if the devil can violate your personal peace, he know that God can't talk to you about personal stuff. Yes. Now your sensitivity to the Spirit of God and your ability, your, yes sir, your ability to hear God regarding paths, peoples, and places is now blurry. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 you ever went so fast you walk past some blessings? Mm -hmm. hey, 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 I've been out with folk, I've been out with folk, and they, and they, we walk together, and they walking so fast, I let them go, and, and guess what? I'm walking behind them, I see a 20 hour bin, pick it up. I go, hey man, look at Twitter. They go, wow. You go, yeah. They went right back. They go into 
Right. See, the devil wants you in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Hurry, yes, sir. Hurry and haste hinders Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let me tell you something. God ain't in a hurry. Hurry and haste will hinder your ability to hear. The beauty of God, if it's God, and if you are going, I'd rather go slow waiting on God mm -hmm. and let him go in front of me mm -hmm. because then I know if I am going slow yes. and if I am a little late, then he'll hold the blessing there for me. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever seen that before? I, I, I don't know about, I mean, I, I, anybody ever been late going somewhere? Yeah. And when you got there and you was like rushing, but you found out they're late too. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. You could have went ahead and stopped by me. You remember you went past McDonald's? Right. And you went past Starbucks? And you're like, man, I'm trying, I, got these, I need some Starbucks, but I'm going to keep going because I'm late. You could have got that Starbucks, couldn't you? And the Holy Spirit was telling you to go, didn't you? But you said, no. I'm trying to. See, what God is doing is training and developing us to be sensitive to Him. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to every, this for everybody, but to be sensitive to, 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 to His synchronization. His harmony, his fluctuations, and his flow. Amen. So watch this. So, so, so I'm going to give you a few scriptures, amen, tonight. It's going to help you. Because remember we said, you don't want to be, you, you want to be fearless, and you want to be faithful. Fearless meaning, you don't want to be led by fear. See, the devil knows the majority of mistakes made by men is when men make decisions based on fear, mm. out of our emotions. We've got to hurry up and do something. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that, that, that's very, very true with bill collectors. Hello? Everybody? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you know, I mean, you have a deal with bill collectors, and they're like, you better hurry up. Yeah. And, and, and now you're lying. Well, I, 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 I have it Friday. <laughs> you know, good one, you ain't going to be. <laughs> 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 Now you're lying. You know, you know, you know, you know, compounded fear with lying. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead and tell them I'm not saying, hey, now watch this. Be bold enough to say, no, I'm, I'm, I may not have a Friday. You may have to do what you got to do. I'm being honest with you. But if I got it, you'll get it. But if not, you ain't going to have it. See, I had to learn to do that for my peace. I, I remember you, it's been a long time ago, but I remember the guy called me. Amen. Back in the day, can I tell you another thing? I, 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 I remember the guy called me, telling me, Mr. Wynn? He's back in the 90s, uh, early, me, me and my wife. Um, hey, Mr. Wynn, now, if you don't, if you don't pay the bills, it's going to mess up your credit. He said, Mr. Wynn, are you there? He didn't know. Back then, I was in the background laughing. I said, man, credit what? Uh, now, now, of course, my credit is very good. Now, but then, you know, I was going through. In fact, uh, in fact, in fact, he went on to say, he kind of said threatening me. I go, what did he say, babe? I remember why she, yeah, because she was right there on the phone. You know, you know we, 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 have, we have phone bill collectors. Why? We had got to where we didn't care. Yeah, yeah. See, we had got to where, we had got to where our living and, 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 our, and, and who we are as people was not regulated to what we had and how we looked to folk. See, see, we got so delivered from people that we, were, we, we realized that it was, in the 90s, we realized it was more important for us to enjoy one another with some peace mm -hmm. than sit there and, and work three jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still run and do all this, trying to, make, trying to maintain an image for the sake of people. Yeah, that's Ooh, it. Mm -hmm. and, and, so, and, I, and so the guy threatened, of course, in fact, yeah, that's right, he threatened. And, and I said, what, sir? I said, well, sir, but hey, you know, you, you got to do whatever you got to do. I, you know, I said that. I said, I said you know, yeah, that's fine. And, and so what happened? I watch this. And so what happened? Um, the day that they said they was gonna do what they was gonna do, I looked out there in the front. It was there. Then the next day, I'm like, oh, this for somebody. I'm gonna be saying if it wasn't uh, necessary. And, and, and then the next day, it was there. The whole weekend went. It was there. The whole week, two weeks went by. And it was there. And I said, Lord, them folks said they didn't call no more or nothing. I said, Lord, them folks said they was gonna do this and that. They didn't do it. And they was gonna do it on, on a certain day. He said, they sure didn't. I said, Lord, look at here. And I, I, and I remember, Rod, I said, they're going, Lord, this is a trip. They sure didn't do it. And he said, what was he trying to do? He tried to teach me something. Mm -hmm. He tried to teach me that he God and they just people. Yeah. Because, see, ladies and gentlemen, it was just a few weeks later that I got a phone call from an attorney. Mm -hmm. And the attorney said that, do you know so-and-so, so-and-so, so I said, yes, I do. He said, I need your account number because they passed away and they left you 
uh, I ain't gonna say the amount, but they left you six figures of money that I need to put in your account. Yes, sir. I said, oh, I said, good, good, one, two, eight, nine. And, and see, back then they didn't have a track. You know, it was, it, you know, they didn't have the, we didn't have computers. Didn't I'm just kidding. <laughs> I gave him that, and just to see, he said, well, I'm wired right now. And sure enough, at, at, at Warren, I went to the bank. I went to the bank the next morning. I went down there. <laughs> I went, I, I, no, I ain't gonna call and check. You know, he's calling and check the account. I went down there, and, 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 and I went down there to see, and I walked in, man, and sure enough. You know what that took? I tell you, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was just a, a, a nice little chunk. It was a hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars. You see, God knew it was coming, but He was trying. To, but the devil was trying to get me distracted so I can get out of position to get it. He was trying to get me to move and do some other stuff to get me out of position to receive what God had for me all the while. That's why I always say, man, just stay with God. He's yeah. either fixing you or fixing the place. Yeah. And I remember sitting there in that bank, man, and showing up. I, had, I sat there. I said, boy, that's what the lady told me. I said, okay. I said, man. He looked at me and said, you didn't know that? I said, no, I sure didn't. <laughs> and as I looked, I said, I said, in fact, I said, I'll tell you what, let me. I said, I said hey. Check my car note. How, how much is it? In fact, how much I owe on it? She told me. I said, Well, I'm going to pay that off. She said, Oh, okay. I paid off the car. Yes, God. She said, They're laughing. And she said, Woo. I said, mm. I said, Hey. Holy, Holy Spirit told me. I, I said, Hey, y'all you, you, got my mortgage. She said, Yes, first commercial bank back then. Y'all mm -hmm. yeah, remember first commercial yeah. yeah. And, and I, I said, Y'all got my mortgage. She said, mm, What do we do, Mr. Wing? And by this time, all the tellers, uh, the, 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 the branch manager, it, 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 hey, it, it, the folks on this side and outside, and lot, everybody was around me <laughs> because they were talking loud and they were tripping and they was all around me and they was going and they were leaning in on the conversation. And I said, "Well, how much is that?" They told me. I said, "Let's go pay that off too." They were, like, and they, they, were and they were like, "Ooh!" They were going back and forth. I was going, "Yeah, look, this is all right here." <laughs> and then on top of that, because there's some more money in there, I said, "I tell you what," I said, "How much y'all insured for?" They said, "They don't insure for a hundred thousand." I said, well, give me some, give me the rest. I need to take it somewhere and put another bag. Yeah. I, and, and, hey, and just like that. Come on, come on I'm trying to help somebody. <laughs> just like that, yeah. God can change your situation. Yeah. You just got to make sure you don't change. That's right. yeah. God's word yeah. is true. He yeah. is faithful. Yeah. And no sooner had I went, took that money and went to the other bank and put it in there, they called me again. Mr. Wynn, I said, what? We got some more money. I said, well, you got the numbers, don't you? <laughs> and to this day, there's money still coming. And I ain't taking the money. <laughs> Why am I telling you that? This works, y'all. I'm trying to tell you something. The devil uses smoke screens. He's using tricks. He's trying to mess with you. If God gave you a promise, he's a promise keeper. He is the most faithful being in the entire universe. Amen. 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 So, so watch it. So, so therefore, yes, sir. So therefore, uh, yeah, yeah. So therefore, turn me to Psalms. Look, I'm just going to read you a few scriptures. Psalms, one through three. Because see, your key thing right now, while you're going through hard times, and while you're not, because see, if you get anxious, you're going to move too quick, and you're going to expose yourself. So therefore, you want to make sure that that you stay full of faith. Amen. See, you want to make sure you stay. How you stay full of faith? Stay full of the word. Faith come by. Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. God. So therefore, you got to, and hear me now, you got to hear the word of God daily. And yeah. you got to turn to it. But Joshua 1 and 8 and 9 talks about that in order to have good success, to have good success, you must meditate the word day and night. Now watch this, because and I'm not putting no legal trick on you, but if you're not hearing or meditating the word day and night, then you're not going to have faith day and night. That's right. It's going to be some peaks and valleys. And what you're going to do, you're going to find yourself, when you come to church Sunday, you high. But by Monday, you're right back low. And then by Tuesday, you count up. By Wednesday, you're back up high. And you're going to be on a spiritual roller coaster unless you make up in your mind that you're going to walk in faith. And faith is belief in the unseen. Amen. you got to get to where you want to meditate the word so much to where the word becomes more real to you than the problems in the world. Amen. You, you got to meditate. Hear me now. You got to meditate the word more. Than, yes, sir. You got to meditate God's promises more than you meditate your personal problems. Because whatever one you're giving the most time to is the one that's going to dominate your thoughts. 
And the one that dominates your thought is going to produce either fear or faith. You're either going to have fruit of fear, which means you're going to be sad, angry, you're going to be down, disgusted, and depressed, and oppressed, and all the other pressures. Or, and, 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 that, and, and by the way, when you walk in fear, that gives the devil uh, a license to steal, kill, and destroy. But watch this. But if you meditate the word, you meditate God's promises, then watch it. Now you're going to have faith. And when you have faith, you have love, joy, and peace. And therefore, and, and also you have joy. Because what has happened, when you meditate the word, the word becomes, the word and the promises become more real than the world and the problems. Psalms 1 and 3. Amen. I'm just going to read something to you. I'm going to kind of get you to go home. I don't want to. Well, yeah, I read my faith. Thank you so much. Psalms 1. Now, you want to check this out. Psalms 1 and verses 1 through 3. Now, this is how you build your faith. Because you're going to have to meditate the words, see? And, and what we did, Robin and I, in fact, and my wife being my wife, uh, there were people that came around and tried to help us out. And, and me being me, you know it's me. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to take care of this. You know, they, they got it. We're going to do this. And my wife in the background going, shaking her head. Because she was praying. And I was dealing with the bills. <laughs> yes, sir. Ooh, I hear that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. In your family situations, make sure that whoever is on the spiritual page gets the priority. Mm -hmm. You know in your marriage who's the most sensitive spiritually. And make sure that, that if there's a veto power, I know the man is the man, but there's sometimes that the wife may know more than the man. Mm -hmm. I appreciate my wife because there were instances that I had decisions to make. And of course, according to my own understanding, it looked pretty good. Yeah. You know, when they came and told me, man, we give you this, I said, okay. You know, and, and, and of course, I knew in my heart, God said, no, God said, no. Nah. So I told them, well, wait a minute, let me pray about it. And I went back to Robin. Hey, they, they going to, she said, she looked down, you know, Robert, my wife. Amen. And she said, baby, that ain't God. And showed up, I said, baby, you sure right. When she said that, I said, you right. I, I just needed to hear it. Or, anybody ever done that before? Okay, y'all don't want to hear it. I just needed to hear it. And when I heard it, I said, you sure right. And thank God I did, because I waited a few weeks and God did what he did. Okay? So watch this. So, so here's the key. Here's the key element. You're going to have to spend more time with God. You're going to have to pray more. You're going to have to do first, first number, Psalms 1 and 3. Yes, sir. And all these in the Psalms, by the way. It said, blessed is the man, that means happy, is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the... Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Man, I ain't going to preach it right now. But watch out for ungodly counsel. Okay. Yes, sir. Ungodly counsel trying to get you away from God. All right. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate when? Day and night. He reads the word when? Day and night. And, and, look at this. and because he reads the word day and night, look at verse number three. And he shall be like a tree, tree planted by the rivers of water. Look, that bringeth forth his fruit in his Somebody say it's my season. It's my season. Somebody say it's my season. It's my season. How many really believe that? Amen. Somebody say it's my season. It's my season. God's rewarding you for your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. God ain't praying. Man, I'm telling you, man. He, he said he should be like a tree. She should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth her his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither. And look, and whatever he or she doeth, Shall prosper. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. The next verse, of course, let's go to verse number. Mm -hmm. Let's go to verse number uh, number number five. Yes, Psalm five. We we just do the order way. Psalm five. Amen. Just give you a few uh, a few scriptures. Right, let me go ahead and go ahead and say. Let me say time. Psalms number five. Because mm -hmm. what you want to do, you got to feed your faith. See now, here's the, see, now, here's the thing you got to understand. You ain't got to feed fear. See, fear in the human, human kind is a default position. See, 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 see you were born in sin. You, 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 you were born in sin. So, so therefore, so fear does not require any, any knowledge, 
You don't have to do it on purpose or nothing. In fact, you sit around, you worry, uh, you know, without even trying to. Yeah, yeah you, you worry easy. But, 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 but walking in faith is intentional. But the beauty of it, because you are a new creation, because you are born again, hear me now, because you are a new breed, God has given to you, uh, the, uh, he has given to you uh, the, the gift of, he has given to you faith. You got enough faith in you to live out your entire life trusting God. Mm -hmm. But watch this. But your faith is like a mustard seed. In other words, like a muscle. And your faith must be developed. And how do you develop a muscle? Through resistance. And how do you develop a muscle through resistance? Through pressure. And how do you develop pressure? How do you develop a muscle with pressure? Through problems. Ooh. Could it be? That the thing that you're facing, that the problem that may be keeping you awoke and the hard time that you are dealing with is something that God wants to use for, for you to flex, to develop your muscles as he flexes his? Could, could it be that God wants you to apply faith and the word to it instead of your own ingenuity and your own methods and means of trying to work things out? Could it be, could it be that God has a supernatural way, amen, of bringing you out of that, of delivering you that your natural mind, that your natural mind ain't ready to walk out yet. Mm -hmm. and, and watch this. If you've done your best, you might as well faith the rest. Yeah. You, you might as well believe God for the rest. Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Look at this, look, look, look. I like this. And when you believe God, and watch this, and when you believe God over a period of time, that's called trust. That's when God, that's when you develop trust. Trust, tr trust is when you get to the point where Paul, like Paul said, you get to the point to where you don't even care no more. Now, by the way, you know you are growing and maturing when the thing that bothers you ain't bothering you anymore. Sometimes God is waiting on you to get to where it don't bother you, and then he fixes it. You, you ever had a long, I, I've had lumps and bumps and different aches and pains that bothered me, and then I prayed about it, you know, I, I rebuked it or whatever, and then what happened Around, sometime a week later, I go like, man, I'm moving around. I go to checking and seeing, and it's gone. Remember everyone went through that before? A lot of times, watch this. A lot of times, God is waiting. Times God is waiting on us to stop caring so he can start working. God's waiting on us to get it out of our minds so he can put it on his schedule. A lot of times, God got the work order ready, but he's waiting on you to stop working on it so he can get on it. Hey, he's waiting on you to get to where it don't matter. Just keep obeying me. He's waiting on you to get like Paul. And you get to the point to where, well, hey, hey, my, God's grace is sufficient. I just keep on rocking with it. And while you're walking, amen, while, you, while you're moving, while you're doing what you do, God works it out. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I'll show you that. Look at this, verse 5 and 11. He says, but let all those that put their trust in thee, let them forever, let them, let them ever shout for joy, because God, thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in the Psalm 55, yes, sir. Psalm 55, amen. You got to write these down. You might want to get a highlight of Psalm 55 and 22. Yes, sir. Did bless anybody yet? Amen. Mm -hmm. Psalm 55 and 22. Look, look what it says. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Ooh-wee. He said, cast your burden upon who? The Lord. Now, who got your burden? You or God? God? Amen. You give it to God. Cast your burden upon the Lord because he will sustain you. Mm -hmm. Psalm, Psalm 57. Yes, sir. Psalm 57. Yes, sir. One and two. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That got me going to my other language. A heavenly language. So about this Shanda. Shanda. Mm, all right now. All right, Shanda. All right. I'm, 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 I'm going to make somebody mad. Now, look, He said, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusted in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Amen. Look what he says. I, verse number two, but this your verse here. He says, I will cry unto God, most high, unto the God that performeth oh, all Lord. things for me. Lord. Ooh. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. See, God is waiting on you to lay back and, and hey, hey, you done done your best. Now let God do the rest. Yeah. Hey, fold your feet, grab you some tea, find out what's going on on TV tonight. You don't pray, you don't gave, you don't obey God. You don't, hey, hey, ain't no sin in the camp. You cool. Drink you some tea, eat you a slice of pizza, and wait and see what God gonna do in the morning. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. Hey. Yeah, so, man, I had the stuff I've done with even this week. And the Lord gave me some instructions a few months ago uh, after, after my baby girl left. And I said, yes, sir. He, it was odd. I said, okay, Lord, I'll do that. He said, just do it. I said, okay, it don't make sense. Just do it. I said, yes, sir. I did. I obey God. And, and the Lord told me, after I did what I did, the Lord told me, now get that thing that I told you to do and check it out today. Uh, he said that yesterday. Yesterday, I checked out what God had told me to do. And lo and behold, I saw a financial miracle. I said, whoa, Lord, look at him. I said, I my couch. I fell back to God all the day. I said, man, I said, Lord, you saw man. He said, son, my word is true. My promises are real. My faithfulness never fails. I'm just waiting on somebody to stick and stay so I can show them the way. Amen. Woo wee. Psalms 121. I'm, this is my last one. Psalms. Yes, sir. Woo. Just bless anybody yet? Yeah. Yes, sir. Psalms 121 and 8. While the music is playing, I must stop. Whew. Psalms 121. And I wish I could tell y'all more. But guess what? You got your own testimonies. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why you want to start journaling. Start writing down what God said and what God did. Amen. Start, 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 start writing down what God told you and how, how it turned out. Amen. That way, see, start, start recording your, your, your wins. Start recording the W. Start, start putting some of your, your scores on the sheet and, and what happened so that when the devil try to hit you with something, you'll be reminded of your win-loss record. You, you can look back and say, no, nah, devil, use a lie. Uh, you said, lie, devil, right here, God came through it. No, no, devil, when you tried that thing, God did this. Yeah. And at that time, you said, I'd never make it again. Yeah, and, yeah. and then God came and did this. Yeah. And then you told me I was broken and everything go, and then God did this. And, and you told me that this one, and then God did. Let me tell you something. You get to where you start recording everything God did, you start rejoicing daily over what yeah. God has done. Yeah. You get to the point to where God, you don't do none of that happening. I'm already spoiled. I, I, hey, hey, I don't want to pass steak. I'm on gravy. Yeah. I, God, you've already done way more than I thought. But the thing about God is this. But wait, there's more. The best is yet to come. Your better days are in front of you. That's why the devil is attacking you. Your best times are yet to come. Ooh, you got to shake that fear off you. Shake that old foggy spirit off you. Get your faith back up. Get back in the way. Get your grace step back. Get yourself back up. Go oh, get what God promised you. Stop hanging around them folks that got your wall, get your wood wet. You can get it. Mm, I can tell you, yeah, that's, see, if this is unusual, you don't told me something. And that's all right, Psalm 121. Mm -hmm. Woo, Jesus. Me and the dog, we do it all the time at the house. My wife be looking down, shaking her head, going, there that boy go. Psalm 121, and I close with this. He says, I will lift up Psalm 121. In verses 1 through 8. You ready? You got to say amen. amen. It says, he says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth. Woo. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Look what it says. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is that shade on the right hand. Ain't even hot. The Lord is that shade on that right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil and shall preserve my soul. The Lord shall be served by going out and by coming in from this time forth and even forevermore.
Oh. Ooh, somebody say, I receive. I receive. Somebody say, Lord, Lord I, thank you I thank you for preserving me. For preserving me. I thank you, I thank you for, keeping me. for keeping me. And now, Lord, and now, Lord in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I dare not, I dare not go, home go home with any burdens, with any burdens or any cares. Any cares. So, Lord, so, Lord, according to your word, according to your word I cast all my cares, all my worries, all my burdens upon you, Lord. I give them to you. I give them to you. I don't have them no more because I give them to you. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke fear. I rebuke oppression. I rebuke depression. In the name of Jesus, I release fear. I release, I release faith. I release faith. I release joy. I release joy. I release peace. I release peace. Because you keep me. Because you keep me. Ooh, so I shout hallelujah in this place. Ooh, come on, give God one more hand for you. Thank you.